In this lecture, we continue our discussion of inventory management for random demand and lead times, and in particular, we will talk about the reorder point model, also known as the RQ model. Just to remind you, when it comes to inventory models for random demand and lead times, we differentiate between multiple order models and single order models. Focusing on multiple order models, there are what we call periodic review models and continuous review models. The reorder point, or RQ model, is a prominent example of a continuous review model. This is the inventory model we will focus on in this lecture. In particular, we will talk about the optimal RQ model first, and then cover the managerial RQ model in a separate lecture. To understand how the RQ model works, let's look at a simple graph that plots inventories over time. We start with some inventory level and then sell off this inventory as customers make purchases. At some point, our inventory runs low and it is time to place a replenishment order. This point is what we call the reorder point or simply R. This reorder point R is the sum of average lead time demand and safety stocks, and it is the inventory position at which a new order is placed. This order will be of size Q, which simply denotes the order quantity. And after some time, we will receive this order, and it will be added to our inventory. The time between order placement and order receipt is the lead time. And then a new order cycle begins. Again, an order of size Q will be placed when the inventory position gets down to the reorder point level. By now, you probably see why we call it the RQ model. There are two key decision parameters. The reorder point R, which tells us when to place an order, and the order quantity Q, which tells us how much to order. Let's take a look at another order cycle. We, again, receive the replenishment we previously ordered and sell off our inventory as we face uncertain customer demand. And again, we place another order as we hit the reorder point. But now take a look at what happens. Before we receive this latest order, customer demand is too great and we run out of inventory and stock out. We didn't have to worry about that in the basic EOQ model, where demand was constant and known and lead times were zero. But now that we deal with the randomness in demand and lead times, stockouts are a real and costly possibility. And this takes us to an important question. What costs do we need to consider and model in the context of an RQ system? Just like in the basic EOQ model, we are concerned with ordering and cycle stock holding costs. But notice that we now also hold safety stocks that serve as a buffer. Hence, we also need to consider safety stock holding costs. We will talk more about safety stocks in just a moment. The fourth and final cost we need to pay attention to is the stockout cost. The amount of money we stand to lose by not having inventory on hand when customer demand occurs. Realistically, when a customer can't complete a purchase because an item is unavailable, they might leave our store and go make that purchase at another retailer. However, in this course, we will assume that in case of a stockout, demand is back ordered and the sale is not lost. So we will use the terms stockout costs and back order costs interchangeably. We take all four cost components into account when deciding on our two key parameters, the reorder point R and the order quantity Q. Of course, the optimal values of Q and R are those values that minimize the sum of these costs. And we find these optimal values by first setting up and then optimizing the total cost function. 
g of q and r is our grand total cost that varies depending on our choices for q and r. Now let's look at the first component of the total cost function, inventory holding costs. You may recall that cycle stocks vary between size q and 0 and are on average q over 2. The other type of inventory we hold is the safety stock. We can express safety stocks as the difference between the reorder point R and average lead time demand DL bar. Multiplying total inventories by the holding cost per unit per year H then gives us annual cycle stock and safety stock holding costs. Annual order placement costs, in turn, are calculated just as in the basic EOQ model. It is the number of order placements, annual demand D, divided by the order quantity Q, multiplied by the order placement cost S. Last but not least, let's take a look at annual back order costs. P is the back order cost per unit, and N of R is the stock out quantity per order cycle. The product of P and N of R then gives us the back order cost per cycle. To get an annual back order cost figure, we then multiply the back order cost per cycle by the number of cycles per year, D over Q. If we want to graph this total cost function, we have to first remember that we are now in a three-dimensional space where Q is on the x-axis, R is plotted along the z-axis, and total costs, G of Q and R, are shown on the y-axis. The total cost function then is roughly bowl-shaped, and we see that total costs are minimized when we choose the optimal order quantity Q star and the optimal reorder point, R star. The obvious question then is, well, how do we determine the optimal order quantity and reorder point levels? To answer this question, we will need to take some derivatives. But the good news is, we will skip the math and jump right ahead and look at the optimal order quantity and optimal in-stock probability formulas. Let's look at Q first. As you can see, this looks very similar to the basic EOQ. The only difference is that we are now also considering stock out costs in addition to holding and ordering costs. When it comes to the optimal reorder point, things are slightly more complicated. The optimization of the total cost function yields what we call the optimal in-stock probability f of r that will allow us to determine the optimal reorder point. We can visualize the in-stock probability as the probability mass shaded in green in this graph of the probability density function of lead time demand. Now let me flip this graph over to its side and embed it in the graph of inventories we saw earlier. We begin a new cycle with an order placement just as the inventory position hits the reorder point. And while we wait for the replenishment to arrive, customers continue to buy. The in-stock probability is the likelihood that we will receive the replenishment before we run out of inventory. If our reorder point was equal to average lead time demand, the stock out probability would be 50% only. That's hardly a desirable customer service target. That's why we have safety stocks. The addition of a safety stock, shaded in orange, allows us to reach the desired in-stock rate and reduces the likelihood of stock out occurrences. Now let me flip the distribution of lead time demand back into its upright position, so to speak. The point I am trying to make here is how we can determine an optimal reorder point given an optimal in-stock rate. This in-stock rate tells us how much safety stock 
we need to add to average lead time demand, DL bar. In this context, let me introduce what we call the standard normal variate Z. Z is simply the number of standard deviations we have to add to the mean so as to cover the desired probability mass under the distribution of lead time demand. In other words, the product of Z and the standard deviation of lead time demand, sigma sub DL, will give us the desired safety stock level. And when we add that to average lead time demand, we get our optimal reorder point R star. I realize this may all sound much more complicated than it actually is. For now, let's remember this. To determine the optimal reorder point, we start out by calculating the optimal in-stock probability using either the formula or the power of Excel. We then convert this probability to a standard normal variant Z and use that to calculate optimal safety stock levels which then define the optimal reorder point. I will show you how to implement an optimal RQ policy in a separate series of Excel video demonstrations. I encourage you to watch those videos and replicate what I do. This will help bring all this theory to life and show you how impactful, effective and efficient inventory management can be.